In just a few hours, I'm heading to the airport where I'll be traveling to the other side of the world to begin my Japanese adventure. All my bags are now packed, and while I've got a couple of hours to spare, I thought I would share with you some of my secrets to packing for skiing. <music> Before I get started, I just want to say that these tips are designed to reduce the stress of ski traveling. Anything that can make the process of leaving your house and arriving at your resort that bit smoother. If you have done some of these before, please let me know if you agree or disagree with them in the comment section below. And if you're going to try them also, let me know how you get on. Let's jump right in. Let's start with what I like to call wearing it. So this jacket here is pretty warm and really good for sort of walking about within the winter climate. And um, it's just one less thing within your baggage. So if you're looking to reduce the amount of stuff you've got stuffed into your suitcases, um, there's too much space. One of the easiest things to do is to put some of the stuff on as you're going into the plane and on the coaches. The same thing goes for hats, uh, gloves, and the big heavy walking boots that you're gonna need when you're trotting around in the snow. A lot of people don't do this, but it's a smart thing to actually wear your warm clothes as you get into the resort, because after a long day of traveling, the last thing you want to be doing is rushing around trying to find your warm jacket when there's a snowstorm outside. Another secret tip is to load the car up the night before you go. This is especially useful if you have an early morning flight. The worst thing that can happen on the morning that you have to actually fly is people are rushing around at all early hours, a lot of anxiety and stress, and someone might accidentally forget a bag because no one's in charge of this and someone's forgotten that. If you load the car up the night before, it gives you a lot of time and space to double check that everything is packed and ready to go and then you can just the following morning get up get in the car and head to the airport if you don't own your own ski equipment this next point might not be useful for you now but will be in the future so if you own any skis snowboards or boots then you have to take advantage of the bag space that comes with it luggage allowance uh, in the hold normally there's a weight limit of anywhere between 20 to 25 kgs and for some people that's just not enough luggage that they want to take and they want to take more this is where having your own uh, ski equipment comes in very handy because there's extra space and there's no weight limit on often these things that go in through the hold. Another useful time where having a ski bag comes in handy is when you're actually trying to check the luggage in and you're told that your bag weighs too much. You can just take a couple of bits of clothes out and put them in with the skis. Next we need to talk about hand luggage. The hand luggage that you take, most likely a rucksack, should be the same rucksack that you're going to take on the slopes. You don't want to be packing two different rucksacks, it's very simple. The rucksack that you are want to be taking has to be able to withstand the conditions it's going to go through when you're on your skiing holiday, so it most likely might get wet when you take it on the slopes, but also it's got to be able to hold the right amount of stuff that you think you're going to have in it. So if you're going out on the slopes, it might be that you need some avalanche gear, some transceivers, but also you're going to be carrying it through the airport so it's got to be able to withhold things such as your laptops and cameras and any documentation that you think you might need now we're going to get tech savvy so to save time stress and paper the only physical piece of documentation that you should have with you as you're traveling is your passport Everything else, your boarding passes, your hotel reservations, your car bookings, your ski equipment hire, your confirmation of tuition can all be found and accessed very easily from your smartphones. The apps that are, you can find, a lot of these, enable you to store these and have easy access when you need them. Once you have tried checking into the airport, going through security by scanning your boarding pass with your smartphone, you will realize how much smoother and easier everything will be from now on. For those of you who are older and are very much used to doing things the old fashioned way with paper, it does take some getting used to. But once you have done it, you will find that everything is worth going digital. My next secret for packing for skiing is to get an extension cable. When I talked about 
packing in my biggest travel mistakes to avoid video, I mentioned that families fight over cables and chargers all the time. One way to reduce the chance of conflict amongst friends and family when it comes to a skiing holiday is to take a portable charger. Everybody then has enough ports that are English as well. That's always a big factor because people sometimes always forget to take travel adapters. Adding on to that, I will always recommend buying a portable charger. I'm a massive fan of these because they just extend the time that you can stay connected when you need to. They're really easy to get on Amazon and eBay and such things and it's just a great thing to have when you go traveling. The next packing secret is most likely going to affect the season airs and that is to take an external hard drive. It's great having Amazon accounts and uh, Netflix Prime accounts but if you've got a bunch of your favourite movies that you've had on your an old laptop or an old desktop for a number of years, take those with you by uploading them onto the hard drive and then some of those cold nights where you're having a, a nice relaxing one in by yourself, it'll come in handy having that bit of tech with you. And my final secret is about your welfare. It's very important, obviously, to take care of yourself. And that is why you should buy... That is why you should buy medicine in the UK before you go out traveling or wherever it is that you are originally from. When you go to foreign countries, medicine is one of the most expensive things to buy. So if you double up on purchases at your local supermarket, Lemsips, uh, Neurofem, uh, Vicks for your chest, um, Barocas for the nights out, curing the hangovers, and multivitamins, all those things. It's incredibly important to pack those and take those with you. Once you've done that, then you will find yourself actually not needing to go to a doctor's for a long time until you run out of stock that you've taken with you. But those are all my secrets that I've shared with you today. I hope you found them very, very useful. If you have done, it would mean the world to me if you can hit the like button in this video and hit the subscribe as well. The next time you're going to hear from me, I will likely be in Japan. Obviously today, now, I'm going to be getting in the car. My first flight is to Helsinki. There will be a vlog coming up on my travelling to Japan itself, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Thanks everyone and take care. Come on, out the way please, you're blocking the shot.